Good morning, day five of our sourdough starter journey. We've got some bubbles. We do have some progress. It's starting to smell a little bit more like sourdough. It hasn't grown, right? Remember I said I put the rubber band at the level. It hasn't really grown at all, which I'm not surprised. Um, you'll start to see that probably by day seven, maybe between day seven and 10. And that's really how long it takes to develop a good, healthy starter. Uh, and it's dependent upon environmental factors, right? The flour, the water, and your temperature. Speaking of which, the other reason this possibly could be stalled a little bit on my end, and I'm wearing three layers of clothing <laughs> because our furnace died. Of course it did. <laughs> Of course it did. By the way, it died a couple of nights ago when it was like the coldest night of the year and probably will still continue to be the coldest night of 2022. It got down to 21 degrees, which is really cold here. And it doesn't even get that cold in like October or November, or December. So the coldest night of the year, we had no heat. <laughs> We're okay. We're okay. But it's 55 degrees in my kitchen. I need, I need some hot food. So that could possibly be why this is a little stalled on my end. I'm just going to keep going at this and pray that, you know, we get our furnace fixed, fixed very soon and keep doing what we need to do for our starter. So I'm going to go take away half and feed. So for those of you that are like, oh my goodness, 55 degrees, we have a two story house with two zones. So thankfully, our HVAC system upstairs works just fine. So the upstairs is a nice like 70 degrees right now. It's just the downstairs. So when we're sleeping and when we're upstairs, we are perfectly fine. And thankfully the weather is supposed to be, you know, nicer over these next couple of weeks. It still gets chilly in the house, but we will survive, right? In the grand scheme of things, we will be fine. All right, I'm going to go to 40. And then double that to 80. Now, because this is still a very kind of gummy texture, I'm just going to add a little bit more water. Feel free to do that on your end as well. I'm scraping down the sides so that I can get a better view of the level. Cover it up. There we go. I didn't even have to move the rubber band. It went right to the same level. So I'm going to make some coffee and then put this on the stove so it has a warmer environment. But I want to address a couple of questions. Number one, you do not want to keep this in the refrigerator right now. We are trying to grow our starter. And so when you put it in the refrigerator for those cooler temps, it actually just kind of slows the yeast down. It stalls them a little bit. It doesn't kill them. It doesn't hurt them, but it slows the process down. And that's not what we're trying to do right now. We're trying to grow the starter and make it active. And so that's why we're keeping it out on the countertop. Again, once we have a mature starter and we're using it, right? Maybe you're only using it once a week. So in between uses, you'll keep it in the refrigerator, but that's not right now. The second question I get is the types of flour, right? So you can use just about any type of flour. I do not have any experience with gluten-free sourdough or gluten-free baking. So I am not using any type of gluten-free flours. Uh, this is strictly all-purpose flour. 
I also grind our own wheat. So sometimes I will use, if I have some leftover, I'll use some of the leftover wheat. So you can use like a bread flour or a whole wheat flour, a rye flour, pumpernickel. Um, I'd probably stay within those. Oh, einkorn all purpose you can use. So there is a variety. I, I would recommend during your starter journey that you stick with all purpose and or a whole wheat. The best combination is probably gonna be a mixture of both at any given time. It doesn't mean half and half during everyday feeding, but maybe one day you do all purpose and the next day you do whole wheat and then you do all purpose for a few couple of days, right? So you can mix and match. Don't get too complicated with it. Don't overthink it. But I just wanna specify you can use different types of flours. Another question I'm getting a lot is about the discard, and I just want to address this again. You're not keeping your discard right now because this is really has no purpose. There's not a lot of yeast in it. It's not producing that sourdough flavor if you were to bake with it. So we're not saving any discard until we get a really active, mature starter. We talked about water a couple of videos ago, right? I'm using filtered water. Well water is most likely perfectly fine, right? Because it's not treated and, and most of the time well water is um, filtered as well, like with a filter. So as long as you're not using tap water that has the chlorine, right? The city treatment of the chlorine. And, and that's what we have, we have tap water. So I use filtered water for my sourdough starter. If you don't have any way of actually filtering your water, that's okay, don't worry. Just put some in a cup and leave it out overnight on the counter and the chlorine actually dissipates. And then last but not least, which I kind of mentioned a couple minutes ago, it's gonna take anywhere from seven to 10 days to get a really healthy starter. Today's day five, be patient. Remember, we are feeding twice a day right now, so I'm gonna do this again tonight. Again, if I see this rising, I'll make sure to film it so you can see it. Otherwise, I'll see you tomorrow.